Hi everyone, Dr. Mike here. In this video, we're taking a look at gas exchange and focusing on the four factors that can affect how a gas can exchange across a membrane. Now it's important because we're gonna talk about some diseases and disorders that also can affect these four factors. All right, so to begin, let's orientate ourselves. What we have here is an alveolar sac. So we're in our lungs and we know that right at the very end of our lungs, we have our alveoli. There's around about 350 million of these alveoli. That's really important. They look like little grapes and together in the big bunch, it's called an alveolar sac. Now the great thing about this is that because they're little grapes, like little balls, it gives them a large surface area. And that's really important because we need the gas to exchange from the alveolar sac into the blood that's going past. So here's the pulmonary circulation. So the blood going through the lung tissue to pick up oxygen and drop off carbon dioxide. So we've got that set in and I alluded to actually the first of the four factors that can affect gas exchange. It is, what did I say it was? Surface area, remember? So number one, that we're gonna, the first one we're gonna focus on is surface area. So. I said that because all the, in the alveoli, 300 to 350 million of them, are little ball-shaped structures, it gives them a large surface area. If I were to take all 300 to 350 million and open them up and lay them out on the floor, it ends up being around about, so let's write this down, about 300 million, and it ends up being around about 60 to 70 square meters. So that's nearly the half size of a tennis court. So it's a very large surface area, which means there's a lot of area for the gas to be able to jump. Let's say if it's oxygen, for the oxygen to jump into the bloodstream, or for the carbon dioxide to jump out. Large surface area for this exchange to occur. Now this is brilliant. How can this get affected though? So when people are chronic smokers, the smoke itself can trigger the immune system to start to try and degrade, not the smoke, however it's trying to attempt to get rid of these uh, toxins that are inside the lung tissue, but a byproduct is the immune system starts to eat away at the alveoli. So what ends up happening is the walls of the alveoli get munched on and disappear. And what we end up getting is instead of this alveolar sac with all of these alveoli, it just looks like one swollen alveolus. It might look like a bigger ball and a larger surface area, but in actual fact, the surface area has dropped significantly. So it's gone from looking like a bunch of grapes to just being a round ball, less surface area. And that can drop nearly by half. Now that can happen in conditions like emphysema, for example, in which the surface area just diminishes. And that obviously means it's harder for them to get oxygen and harder for them to get rid of the carbon dioxide. So that's the first factor, surface area. The second that we need to focus on is what we call the partial pressure. Partial pressure. Now the partial pressure is the individual pressure of each gas. So what is the pressure of oxygen in the alveoli? And what is the pressure of the oxygen in the pulmonary blood vessel? What is the pressure of carbon dioxide in the pulmonary blood vessel? What is the pressure of carbon dioxide in the alveoli? This is important because gases will only move down their own concentration gradient. They don't care about the concentration of other gases, just themselves. So for example, the concentration of oxygen in millimeters of mercury in the alveoli is around about 104 millimeters of mercury, right? That's the partial pressure. Now, in order for oxygen to go from here to here, it has to go downhill, meaning the pressure in the blood vessel has to be lower, and it is. So it's around about 40 millimeters of mercury. So as you can see, if it was a slide where you've got the ladder to climb up top and then the slide going down. Up here is 104, down here is 40, and you're going wee down the slide, all right? Now if we look at carbon dioxide, the, past, the carbon dioxide wants to go from the blood into the alveoli. So the partial pressure of carbon dioxide here is around about 46 
millimeters of mercury. And here in the alveoli is 40 millimeters of mercury. Now look at that, it's still going downhill, but it's less steep. So I would say it's more like this, where you've got 46 up here and 40 here. So this is for carbon dioxide and this is for oxygen. Now we're gonna talk about the steepness of this, but at the end of the day, as long as the partial pressure is different and it goes from high to low, it is more likely to diffuse in that high to low direction. All right, so that's partial pressure. Remember a couple, what can affect the partial pressure disease wise? Well, maybe not a disease, but if you go mountain climbing, if you go up, 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 up to very high altitudes, the amount of oxygen available is less, right? Because oxygen has weight. So you get more oxygen at sea level than you do higher up. So if the oxygen is so low that the oxygen we inspire is less than 104 millimeters of mercury and it goes lower and lower and lower, lower it's less steep of a slide. So the diffusion is reduced. And that can be an issue with supplying enough oxygen. Another thing that can happen is, remember I mentioned emphysema, damaging the alveoli? Well that's, and what did I say about that? I said, when you damage the alveoli and emphysema, it's harder for the oxygen to diffuse across because there's less surface area, but also less carbon dioxide can diffuse back into the alveoli because of less surface area, which means car carbon dioxide can accumulate inside the bloodstream of people with emphysema, which means, right, that's important, that this can go up. That can go up. So if the partial pressure here goes up, then it's more likely to jump into the alveoli. Now, you might think, great, we get rid of carbon dioxide. But people with emphysema, they have what it's called an obstructive disease, right? It's called chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. So think about it as though there's an obstruction in the airway. And what that means, it's harder for that carbon dioxide to leave. So it means the carbon dioxide level also accumulates in the alveoli as well, which then makes it even more difficult for that carbon dioxide to diffuse out. So that's complex, right? That's difficult for people with emphysema. Number three, the third thing is solubility. Solubility. Got to learn how to spell. So basically this is what we call the diffusion coefficient. The diffusion coefficient. Effectively, how easy is it for this gas to diffuse across? Now, obviously that's a product of the partial pressure differences, but how soluble is it in a liquid environment? Because we know that there's liquid across here. So it's got to do with its solubility. Now, oxygen, relatively soluble. Carbon dioxide, 20 times more soluble. CO2 is 20 times more soluble than oxygen. So it's easier for carbon dioxide to diffuse across than it is for oxygen. And this, I said what I was going to mention, this is the reason why you need a steeper partial pressure difference for oxygen than carbon dioxide. Because carbon dioxide is 20 times more soluble, it's easier for it to get across the membrane because it's more soluble. So it needs less of a partial pressure difference, less of a push to go downhill. But the oxygen is less soluble, needs a greater difference needs a, more of a push, right? Hopefully that makes sense. Now, the solubility can be affected by a couple of things. And one really important thing is the final point here, which is the thickness of the membrane. Thickness of membrane that it needs to diffuse across. So what we've got here is the, what we call the respiratory membrane. So you've got the epithelia, of the alveoli, you've got the endothelia of the blood vessel, and you've got the connective tissue that sits between both, right? So it's really, really thin, and it's thin enough for the gases to diffuse across, no problem. However, when you have a lung disease, let's say COVID-19 or pneumonia, this can lead to an inflammatory response in the alveoli, in the lung tissue, and it leads to a fluid buildup 
in the alveoli. So you actually get fluid water building up at the interface, at the respiratory membrane. And that makes it harder for gases to, to diffuse across, right? Because it's made it thicker. So it's, now remember also what I said about solubility. It makes it harder for oxygen to go across and carbon dioxide, because it's more soluble, it's made it harder for it too. But here's the thing, it can move across easier. So one of the problems that we can have is in these types of cases is you get hypoxemia, not enough oxygen, but the carbon dioxide seems to be able to leave a little bit better. So having the hypercapnia is going to be secondary to the hypoxia that's happening here. So another thing that can happen is not only with things like COVID-19 and pneumonia, but if you have long-term chronic uh, respiratory conditions, you can get scarring occurring at that connective tissue that's underlying. So this can scar up. And if that scars up, again, it makes it thicker. And that's going to impede both the carbon dioxide and the oxygen significantly. And then you'll get both the hypoxia and the hypercapnia because of the thickness of that tissue. So as you can see, these are the four important factors that affect gas exchange. I'm Dr. Mike. Hi everyone, Dr. Mike here. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe. We've got hundreds of others just like this. If you want to contact us, please do so on social media. We are on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at Dr. Mike Todorovic at D-R-M-I-K-E-T-O-D-O-R-O-V-I-C. Speak to you soon.